to do is speak the word and the word will not return void you can say to a mountain get out of my way a mountain of a problem a mountain of a situation you can speak to it praise the name of the lord does the mountain hear you god's hear you and god's power moves what is in your way sometimes you got to speak the closed doors y'all and when you speak the closed door, Lord, open this door. Open this opportunity. Lord, I need this. And because of who you are, the Lord said he'll hear us when we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. The proof. not a Johnny come lately. He's not a God that is in a distance. He's a God that makes himself available to his children. And whatever is in him is in us. We are in the position to have any and everything that the Lord has made available to us. And we access what God has done for us by faith. If you don't have what you need, it's not the Lord's fault. It's your fault. Because you don't recognize what you have in God. And if you don't have it, it means that you're not saved. And if you are saved, the Lord went to Calvary for you and me. So he can provide whatever that we need. Are you in the house with me this morning? Because he is, I am. Praise the name of the Lord. I said because he is, I am. And whatever we desire to be is in him. Paul said, I can do what? How many things? All things through Christ who strengthens me. Praise the name of the Lord. And just for the benefit of those of you that were not here on last time, I'm just going to go through some things that are, that's in Christ that is yours. Praise the name of the Lord. And it's important to recognize this and rehearse when you pray. The best prayer you can pray is when you pray God's word back to him. Or pray his promises back to him. Remind him of his promises. Remind him of his word. And what is in his word becomes yours. Amen, y'all? Praise the name of the Lord. Number one, just to, for those of you that were not here. Praise the name. Number one, we are justified. Declare not guilty of sin. Romans 3.24. We're not going to go through all of them. Number two, no condemnation awaits us. Romans 8 and 1. Number three, we are set free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8 and 2. Number four, we are sanctified, made holy in Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. Number 5. We are pure and holy in Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30. We will be alive at the resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15 and 22. Number 7. We are new persons. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Praise the name of the Lord. We are made right with God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Praise the name of the Lord. Number nine. We 
are one in Christ with all other believers. Galatians 3.28. Number 10. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Ephesians 1 and 3. Number 11. We are holy and without fault. Ephesians 1 and 4. Praise the name of our God. Number 12. We are adopted as God's children with all of the rights of a child. Ephesians 1 and 5 and 6. And this is where we stop. Number 13. Our sins are taken away and we are forgiven. How many people here that are saved? If you are saved and you are in Christ, your sins are forgiven. That means that the Lord will not hold your sins against that which he has forgiven you of. He said, I'll take your sins and I'll cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. And I will remember them no more. It doesn't mean that God has amnesia. What it means that God is not going to charge you with it. What he has forgiven you of doesn't matter what the devil say to you, try to speak in your ear and try to cause you to be, be guilty. When you are forgiven, you are forgiven. And when the Lord forgives you, he does not remember or will charge them on your account. Remember, the Bible let us know that every word that we speak is being recorded in heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Lord is saying the deeds are recorded. But when you come to the Lord, he forgives you. You are forgiven forever. Praise the name of the Lord. And as a believer, as we live our lives here on the earth, the Lord said to us, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. What does the Lord do when he forgives us? A child of God that is forgiven will be constrained, if you will, by the love of God. That the love that God has for us will not live in sin because of the love of Christ. When you make an error or do something wrong as the child of God, one of the proof is you'll get it right. Because no believer enjoy living in sin. No believer can't rest at night. If you commit sin, you know you have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ the righteous. And his love is going to make you live right. Because you love him so much. Love covers a multitude of fault. Aren't you glad about that? Praise the name. It's, it's amazing. The Lord can love us so much. He will not let us be comfortable in doing wrong. He, he loved me so much. I just got to get it right. You know why? Because... If you sin, it sort of gives the blockage between you and your Savior. If your fellowship is broken, you're going to miss the fellowship. Because it's nothing like being in the fellowship with God. Are you in the house with me this morning? If you love him, you're not going to wallow in sin. If you stay in sin, it means that you've never been forgiven. Amen, cross. If you live in it, know that you're in it, and it doesn't bother you, you never will say it. Y'all don't hear me? Praise the name of the Lord. Because when you love somebody, you do anything.
everything in your will or that's possible to stay in fellowship. Amen? Praise the name. It's, 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 it's not the Lord that's going to do it. Grace is going to do it. When you understand the grace of God, praise the name of the Lord, that the Lord has picked us up, turned us around, and gave us a life that nobody else can give us. It's going to make you get it right with God. Praise the name of our God. Praise the Lord. So, so what is it saying in 13? Our sins are taken away. And we are forgiven. Now let every believer say, I'm forgiven. The proof is in Ephesians 1 and 7. Here come the proof. Ephesians 1 and 7. Read it with me. Read. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The riches of his grace. God's grace is a gift. I say God's grace is a gift. God's grace is a gift. Let me take it further. God's grace is a person. And the grace of God is Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ lives in you, praise the name of our God. He take care of the believer. Praise the name of our God. This is why we got to understand. Praise the name of the Lord. According to the riches of his grace. Grace, we don't deserve it. We can't earn it. We can't buy it. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a gift. Are y'all in the house? Salvation is a gift. Praise the name of the Lord. Every person in here today that is not saved can be saved before you leave here today. You know why? It's a gift. It's not something that you do. It's something that has already been done. Y'all didn't hear me. I said salvation is not something you do. Salvation is something that has already been done that's given to you when Jesus Christ is accepted in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you with me? Praise the name of the Lord. Number 14. We will be brought, brought under Christ's authority. When you're in Christ, when you recognize that because he is, you are, you are given authority. Y'all don't hear me. The name of Jesus is your badge of authority. I said the name of Jesus is your badge of authority. Stop putting your confidence in people. Put your confidence in Jesus. And Jesus will take care of the people. He must be first. Somebody is bothering you, always on your case, tell Jesus about it. And then you're going to be able to confront that situation in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Why? It's because his name is your badge of authority. Praise the name of the Lord. The reason why people have access to things of secret, like the federal government, for example, or a person who are of renown is because of the authority that is given to them. I, I, give, you, I give you a quick sidebar. Praise the name of the Lord. My sons are married, but they all got keys to my house. 
That's the authority I gave to them. They can come and go as they wish. As long as they don't shop like Timmy. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. But my point is, it, it is when an authority gives you authority, when you act, you act in that person's name with the same authority. Are, are you with me? So, 14 says, we will be brought, notice, under Christ's authority. If you are in authority, you must be under authority. Are you with me? You see, Satan is, is, is called the God of this world. God with a small g. But the world belongs to the Lord. The earth is the Lord. And the fullness thereof. And the world and they that dwell therein. Praise the name of the Lord. So every believer has dominion. Y'all didn't hear me. Every believer has dominion. That means rulership. Praise the name of the Lord. You got power. That's why it says, at the name of Jesus, that's your badge of authority, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You and I have the privilege of using his name. This is why when we pray, we pray in his name. Why? It's because you are under authority and the same authority that's in Jesus is in you by just using his name. Amen, y'all? Have you, you, you ever heard of name dropping? You ever heard that phrase before? Name dropping. People drop name to make connections. Amen, y'all? That's why if, if I'm dealing with somebody that's in authority, whether, what kind, whether it's a company or any kinds of business, I always like to deal with the man on the top or the woman on the top. Because that's the person who has the power. Amen, y'all? You don't have to go through nobody else. Go straight to the top. Guess what? Believers go straight to the top. You know why? Because the temple was rent from top to bottom, giving us access to the very present and throne room of God. Y'all don't hear me. Jesus went in to the holiest of holies, praise the Lord, and sat down. Every other priest that went in stood up. Jesus went in and sat down. Where did he sit? On the mercy seat. He sat on the mercy seat so that everything that we need, praise the name of a God, he can give it to us. Because his mercy endureth. Y'all got it? Praise the name of our God. His mercy endureth forever. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are brought under Christ's authority when we recognize because he is, I am. Ephesians 1 and 10 is the proof of the text. Read with me. Ephesians 1 and 10, what does it say? That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Somebody shout in Christ. Read, both which are in heaven 
and which are on earth, even where? In him. Verse 11, Ephesians 1. Read. In whom also we have obtained, notice, obtained, past tense, obtained what? An inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. God wills to bless every believer with everything that you need. Y'all didn't hear me. I say he wills to bless you. And when God wills to bless you, guess what? Nobody can curse you. Nobody can take away what God is willing to give to you. No demon in hell can curse you when you know you're blessed. How many of you know you're blessed? How many of you know you're blessed in here? If you got Jesus Christ inside of you, you are blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. This is why you don't listen to all the chatter in the street when people say bad things about you, call you out of your name. You know who you are. So don't chase a lie. You know who you are. Praise the name of our God. If you Satan tried to make people forget who they are or act out of character, Satan said to Jesus, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. What does Jesus say? It is written. Sometimes you got to answer the devil, it is written. Praise the name, it is written. Point to that which is written. And what is written will stand up and testify. Y'all didn't hear me. Praise the name of the Lord. What would it testify? That we are, praise the name of the Lord, brought under the authority of Christ. Who gave you this authority? Jesus. This is why after the day of Pentecost, they didn't want the disciples to preach in the name of Jesus. They wanted to silence them. But the child of God, whatever you do, do it in his name. If you go shopping to buy something, do it in his name. Amen, y'all. He said, everything you do in words or in deed, do it in my name. Father, I'm going out looking for a new car. Give me direction so I can get the best deal for the less amount of money. Because whatever you save me, I'm going to invest it back into you. Praise the name of the Lord. God knows how to give you the right salesperson. Who will give you the right deal. Because the king's heart or the person in charge, heart is in the hand of God. And he can turn it whatever way he wants to. The reason why we don't have a lot of things we should have, we don't recognize we have the authority to get it. Amen, y'all. Praise the name of the Lord. Number 15, we are marked as belonging to God by the Holy Spirit. We are marked as belonging to God by the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of God. Every believer is marked. Guess what? The devil know who you are. That's why he trembles. When you are on your knees, when you are prostrating yourself, when you are bringing a situation to God, Satan is always trying to up, disrupt your prayer so you can't get it through. You ever wonder why when you really want to get with God, the phone start ringing? Somebody's at the door. Somebody's making noise next door. Somebody's trying to get you. That's the devil. Don't want you to connect with God. The 
this is why when you meet with God, it has to be on purpose and intentional. Are you, are, you, are you listening? You are marked. There's a mark on you. Praise the name of the Lord. The script did not only say the Lord knows those who are his. Satan knows who belongs to God too. Praise the name of the Lord. You, you know the story. The man tried to do some work, some miracles that he saw Paul doing. <laughs> the devil spoke to Paul, I know. But who are you? I think he cursed too. Paul, I know. But who are you? The devil know who you are. And when you have the authority of Jesus inside of you, and all you got to do is speak the word, and the word will not return void, you can say to a mountain, get out of my way. A mountain of a problem, a mountain of a situation, you can speak to it. Praise the name of the Lord. Does the mountain hear you? God's hear you, and God's power moves what is in your way. Sometimes you got to speak the closed doors, y'all. And when you speak the closed door, Lord, open this door. Open this opportunity. Lord, I need this. And because of who you are, the Lord said he'll hear us when we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. The proof of the fact that we are marked as belonging to, the, to God by the Holy Spirit is in Ephesians 1.13. Ephesians 1.13, what does it say? Read it with me. In whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Everything that the Lord does, when he finishes a transaction, he seals it. He seals it with his spirit. Sealing has to do with ownership. Sealing has to do with security. Sealing has to do with a finished transaction. Praise the name of our God. So when you, when the Lord seal your life with the Spirit of God, is saying you are His. You belong to God. And because you belong to God, you have the authority of God. <laughs> and you have the power of God. Are you all listening? But there's a Romans one, uh, book of Acts, chapter 1, verse number 8, says, so you shall receive what? Power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Didn't he say so? Somebody shout hallelujah. Number 16, we've got to hurry right along. Number 16, we have been raised up to sit with Christ in heavenly realm. That's the believer. Because he is, I am. I say because he is, I am. Tell your neighbor that. Because he is, I am. Look at what he says. We have been raised up to sit with Christ in the heavenly realm. Then you ask the question, how can I be sitting with him when I'm still on the earth? <laughs> Praise the name of our God. You see, what God has done, he has brought the tabernacle of the earth, hallelujah, which is a type of that which is already in heaven. He is already with the heaven, sat on the right hand of the throne of God, Praise the Lord. And at the Pentecost, he got inside of us in the person of the Holy Spirit. So he's sitting with us on the earth and also sitting with us in heaven. Y'all don't hear me. 
In other words, the two extremes are connected. That's why what you're buying on the earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on the earth is loose in heaven. In other words, you got the best of two extreme situations. Somebody shout hallelujah. My God, you'll make me feel like preaching. Praise the name of the Lord. We have been raised to sit with Christ in the heavenly realm. Proof, Ephesians 2 and 6. Ephesians 2 and 6. What does it say? Read it with me. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places where? In Christ. In Christ. Somebody shout in Christ. You see, wherever Christ is, that's where we are. He's in us. We are in him. Praise the Number 17. We are God's masterpiece. This is what you got to understand so you can stop tripping, trying to be like somebody else. You don't need to be like nobody else. Be happy in your own skin. I should be happy in your own skin. Be happy the way God created you. Your height, your size. Whether you're lean as a mean machine. Be happy. Praise the name of our God. In your own skin. You know why? You are God's masterpiece. He sculpted you with his word. He knew what he wanted you to be. He knew what he wants you to look like. He wanted you to know. Oh, God help me in here. He wants you to know that you are one of a kind. Look at your neighbor and say, I am one of a kind now see some of y'all not saying y'all looking at me look at somebody say you are one of a kind praise the name of our God or look at that again say you are one of a kind now say to them you are God's masterpiece Somebody give him praise in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. D don't let nobody sell you cheap. Praise the Lord. Because you may not look like them. You may not have their same shape. You may not have their same size. You may not have their same look. You look in the mirror and say, my God, you're one fine creature. Praise the name of God. When you get back home, you go in your you go look in the mirror and say, hey, hey, you are one time preacher, you. You fine preacher, you. Praise the name of our God. Somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our God. You are God's masterpiece. Praise the name of our God. You see, if you don't think well of yourself, nobody else will. You got to think of yourself the way God thinks of you. Because you are special in the eyes of God. You're not trying to be like nobody else. You are happy being who you are. And you can only be your best self. Nobody can be you but... Give him glory. Praise the name of our God. We are God's masterpiece. Proof, Ephesians 2 and 10. Proof, two and, Ephesians 2 and 10. Read it with me. We are, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath what? Before ordained, that we should walk in them. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, God is working on each of us because we are in him. He is in us. Every day of our life, the Lord is sanding, polishing, chipping, 
and he allowing everything we go through to work together for our good and when you're having a bad day it's really not a bad day with God God is polishing you because you are his masterpiece somebody give God praise in this house somebody give God praise in this house we have to learn, saints of God, even whatever happened in our lives as you walk with God, don't give Satan any credit. You go to your God because God is going to cause everything to work together for your good. Even when it looked bad, God slips it into good because the end product is really what matters. I said the end product is really what matters. Praise, look, look at how ugly a worm is. That's the beginning. The end of a worm is a butterfly. Y'all don't hear me. You got to go through the lava state. <laughs> Praise, I, just, I don't have my wings yet. Some people say, you, you, what's wrong with you? I don't have my wings yet. I, I'm working on my wings. I got to stay in hiding until my wings develop. You don't, don't get me out of the cocoon too soon. I, I, I'm hidden away with God. God is working on me. God is mixing my colors. God is making me beautiful in the dark. But when I come out, when I come out of my hiding place, God is going to show you what is inside of me. I may look like a worm now, but there's a butterfly in my future. Somebody shout in here that there's a butterfly in my future. Give him praise in the house of God. Give him glory. Hallelujah. I may not look too good right now. My hair may not be look too good. Losing my hair. But one day I'm going to have a full head of hair. I'm going to have hair just like Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't have to shave it. Somebody shout hallelujah. See, I'm God's masterpiece. Look at somebody say, I'm God's masterpiece. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. High five somebody say I'm God's masterpiece. Say let me touch your peace. Because I'm God's masterpiece. Hallelujah. Oh tell some, get up and tell somebody let me touch your peace. Because I'm God's masterpiece. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him glory. See, I'm God's masterpiece. I'm God's masterpiece. I'm God's masterpiece. I'm God's masterpiece. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I want to conclude this. Have your seat for, for a moment. I'm happy with myself. <laughs> As I'm happy being myself. I'm not trying to be like nobody else. You know why? God has made us one of a kind. Look at your neighbors, I'm one of a kind. That's not being arrogant. That's how your God made you. Praise the name of the Lord, make another one like you. One of you not necessary. I, I, I think y'all missed that. If God make you like someone else, one of you are not necessary. 
Let me say it to this side. This side don't get it. If God makes someone else just like you, one of you are not necessary. Well, maybe this side over here get it. If God make you like someone else, one of you are not necessary. Somebody shout, I'm God's masterpiece. Thank you, Jesus. Number 18. We have been brought near to God. We have been made, brought near to God. You see, because he is I am, the process, he is bringing us near to him. This is what God wants. We have been brought near to him. Ephesians 2.13 is the proof of the text. What does it say? But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Nobody else can do that for you but God. This is why you can't dress up, you can't fix up, you can't buy up, because God cannot be brown nose. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That's how we get nigh to the Lord. That's how we come near to the Lord. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. I, I in the house with me. Praise the name of the Lord. This is why blood, the blood of Jesus is so important and we need to understand it. Praise the name of the Lord because that's how we are brought nigh. How is our sin covered? How is sin washed away? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the life of one who is perfect in exchange for somebody who is not perfect. And what's in the perfect sacrifice now is in the imperfect person. We are made now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Number 19. We share in the promise through Christ. Now you got to get this one. We share in the promise through Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. God the Father made promises to his son. And his son makes promises to us. Praise the name of the Lord. But everything that pertaineth to Christ pertaineth to us. I know it's, it's a long stretch in terms of understanding and acceptance and application, but it's necessary. I'm taking the time, and we've been doing this for the, almost the last month, month, all this month. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to know. We need to know. Praise the name of the Lord. We share in the promise through Christ. Ephesians 3 and 6, that's the proof. Ephesians 3 and 6. I want you to get familiar with this passage of scripture. Read it with me now in concert. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Praise the name of the Lord. Keep in mind, saints of God, the Gentiles mean non-Jews. When Jesus came on the scene, Jesus came out of, well, the tribe of Judah. Jesus was a Jew. Praise the name of the Lord. The Gentiles and the Jews has no dealing with one another. They hated one another. But Jesus came down and broke down that, that wall of petition that was between these two people, Jew and Gentile. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Gentile is mean a non-Jew, a non-Jew. But today, there are three groups of people in the world. Jew, Gentile, church. Don't forget it. Three groups of people. And I'm not talking about ethnicity. Three groups. Jew, 
Gentile church. Now what Jesus has done, Jesus stood and he said, whosoever will, let him come. So the Gentile can come. The Jew can come. And when you're in Christ, you are neither Jew nor Gentile. You are a saint. If you're saved, you're a saint. I say if you are saved, you are a saint. Praise the name of the Lord. That's the third group. And guess what? That's the preferred group. If you want to hold on to your identity being a Jew, holding your identity to being a Gentile, you'll go to hell. You have to change through Jesus to get in the third group. The third group is really not the third group. The third group is really the first group. Because that's the first group going to be taken up. In the first resurrection. Okay, okay. Let, let me hurry along. Praise the name. I want to finish this today. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. Praise the name of the Lord. Number 20. We can come with freedom and confidence into his presence. We can come with freedom and confidence into his presence. Would you like it, if you could just drive, just use an example, if you could drive to Washington, D.C., and just walk right straight and say, hello, Mr. President. No guards, no doors, just walk in. Say, hey, Obama, how you doing, Obama? Hey, where is Michelle? That's access. That's access. Now, to the, 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 to, to the next extreme is more important than the president. You're talking about God's presence. Access into God's presence. Praise the name of the Lord. When you pray, you can enter into his presence. When you praise, you can enter into his presence. And his presence is like no other presence. His presence changes the atmosphere. He absorbs everything when he's on board. This is why when Isaiah had this vision of Jesus, he saw him in his train. Praise the name of the Lord. His awesomeness. Praise the name of the Lord. Proof, proof that we can come with freedom and confidence in his presence. Ephesians 3 and 12. Ephesians 3 and 12. Give me a moment. We'll be on our way. I just want you to get this under your spiritual belt. Ephesians 3 and 2, 12. What does it say? Ephesians 3 and 12 says, In whom we have boldness and access with Confidence by faith in him. Let's read that one more time. In whom we have boldness, access with confidence by faith of him. In other words, Jesus was our forerunner. He was our forerunner into the holiest of holies. Only the high priest went into the holiest of holiest once a year. And before he went in, he had to check to make sure his life was in alignment with God. And when he went in, he had to have some bells on his garment in case he died in God's presence. They could take the rope that was around him and pull him out. Because nobody could get in, and in there if he died in God's presence. But when Jesus went in, he didn't have no belt, he didn't have no rope. He offered himself. Praise the name of the Lord. He offered himself as the sacrifice and sat down on the mercy seat. 
Isn't that wonderful? He made it open the way for you and I to go in. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you, my daughters. Thanks for being with us. God give you traveling mercy. Go on in the holiest of holies. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our sisters from Canada. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise for them. Praise the name of Jesus. Let me give you this couple more and we're going on our way. Praise the name of the Lord. Number 21. We got only a, a, a couple more. We are members of Christ's body, the church. We are members of Christ's body, the church. Christ's body, not this building, not Greater Refuge Temple, Christ's body, Christ's body. You are in Christ's body. I say you are in Christ's body. I say you are in Christ's body. Y'all didn't get it. I say you are in Christ's body. And Christ is the head of the body. And if the head is holy, the body is holy. Somebody shout, I'm in Christ's body. Proof, proof, proof. Ephesians 5.29. Ephesians 5.29. 5.29 and 30. Let's read it. Let's get the proof. What does it say? For no man ever yet hateth his own flesh, but nourish and cherish it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. Y'all didn't get that. We are members. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a member. Not of Greater Refuge Temple, but the body of Christ. The body of Christ. It, you see, a lot of people start tripping over local assemblies. Don't understand the big picture. If you're in the church, you're going to remain in the church. It is not a building. It's the body of Christ. Somebody shout, I'm a member of the body of Christ, which is the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes people bad name talk about the church, talking about Jesus. Shame on you. Cut it out. Stop it. Praise the name of the Lord. God is working on folk. But they're in his body. He know how to fix folks that is in his body. Praise the name of the Lord. He know how to fix them. That's why he got them in there. Whatever they need is eventually that what's in him is going to be in them. It's a process. I say it's a process. Praise the name of the Lord. But if you're a tumbleweed, you're not going to ever get any roots. You can't be a tumbleweed and expect to grow. And you can't plant a tree and keep pulling it up. It's either going to die in transition to the next place. When the Lord plants you, remain planted. Praise the name of our God. He said, ye shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Sometimes people wonder why they're not prospering. You're like a tumbleweed. Or a tree that is being transplanted every 30 days. Number one, the, the tree that's plant, transplanted so often 
is not going to ever develop a root system. You got to be planted long enough to develop a root system for the storms of life. Because storms will come. And the root system that has been developed by staying rooted and grounded is not only going to be stable in the storm, but it's going to produce fruit when no other tree is producing. My God, what a word. Somebody shout hallelujah. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm down to the last two. Number 22, we have been given fullness in Christ. I, wrap your heart around this. And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going over a couple of minutes. We have been given fullness of Christ. Wrap your heart around that. Stop tripping because you have not gotten to the place where God is taking you. Be patient. He will get you there. But you got to stay rooted. You got to stay grounded. He going to get you there. Praise the name of the Lord. If a little storm come, it is just to get you ready for where you're going. It is not what you're going through, it's what you're going to. You got to go through to get to. Amen, y'all? Praise the name of the Lord. You have been given the fullness of Christ. The, the, the proof of the text is in Colossians. Colossians 2 and 10. Read it with me. And you got it? And ye are what? No, no. no. Is that missed? Is that a word in the wrong place? Ye are complete. Notice where? In him. Which is the head of all principalities and power. All the angelic realm. Jesus is the head. He's a head of Satan. He's a head of all the archangel. All the head of the seraphim. And the, oh God help me in here. And the cherubim. Jesus is the head. He is, to use a colloquial term, he is the man. I say he is the man. And at the same time, he is God. At the same time, he is Lord. The buck stop. I said the buck stopped with him. <laughs>